Hey guys, how's it going? So in my last video, I gave you guys a brief introduction to Fourier series and I told you that a function f of x over here, for example, can be written in terms of, a sub in, of an infinite summation of cosine and sine series with the Fourier coefficients a0, an, and bn given by these formulae. However, I did not tell you how did we get these formulae for a0, an, and bn, and so on. So in this tutorial or video, I will be deriving the formulae for a0, an, and bn. Now, uh, one thing that you should remember is that this formula over here assumes that the period of a function, the period of our function f of x is 2L. So this uh, formula is only, um, so, so basically we assume that the period is 2L. So whatever we have, uh, uh, whatever period we have in our fun of our fun for our function, we just equate it to 2L and get the value of L and then plug it back in to do the math. However, to make the derivation of A0, AN, and BN slightly simpler, what I'm going to do it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider the case when f of x has a period of 2 pi rather than any arbitrary period. So when f of x has a period of 2 pi, then if I uh, equate it with 2L, which this formula assumes to be the period, then I get the value of L as pi simply. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this value of L over here and here. And then what I get is I get that f of x is equal to a0 by 2 plus summation from 1 to infinity a n cosine of n x plus b n sine of n x. Yeah, and then similarly, the formula for a0 becomes 1 over pi summation from 0 to twice of l or rather 2 pi this time f of x dx a n becomes 1 over pi integral over 2 pi 0 to 2 pi f of x multiplied by cosine of n x dx and then finally b n becomes 1 over pi integral from 0 to 2 pi f of x sine nx dx. So we will now be deriving these, these um, formulae for the Fourier coefficients or the weights, the Fourier weights, yeah. And also let me just put them in a box. Okay, so the trick to derive these is very simple. However, before I do that, I want you to remember some of the common integrals that we will be using in our derivation. And these integrals um, are easy to calculate and I have also made some videos on those. So you may check them out if um, they are not so obvious for you. However, I won't be calculating those integrals here. I will just be giving the values of the useful integrals that we will be using in our derivation. So the useful integrals are the first one is that the integral of sine nx sorry nx from 0 to 2 pi is 0 simply and then the second integral that we'll be using is the integral of cosine of nx from 0 to 2 pi which is also 0 and then third is the integral of sine square nx over 0 to 2 pi is equal to pi and then similarly the integral of cosine square nx over 0 to 2 pi is also equal to pi and then next we will be using the integral of sine nx multiplied by sine mx over 0 to 2 pi 
is equal to zero and then the integral of cosine nx multiplied by sorry cosine of mx dx is also equal to zero next we'll be using the integral of sine nx multiplied by cosine of mx over 0 to 2 pi is also equal to 0 and then the integral of sine nx multiplied by cosine nx is also equal to 0 and yeah I guess um, these are the integrals that we'll be using in our derivation so don't worry if you don't understand how um, does one get these integrals because I have made different videos on it however the problem was that I didn't want to make this video too long or complicated and I only wanted to focus our attention on how to calculate these uh, or derive these Fourier coefficients so as I said um, to derive the first Fourier coefficients that is a naught so we will be deriving the value of a naught, a naught or rather the formula for a naught so what we do is we multiply our equation over here let's call this equation as equation one so we multiply our equation or, or actually i'm sorry we don't multiply it by anything we, what we do is we just integrate both sides of our equation both sides of our equation sorry one from zero to two pi that is the period of our function f of x so what happens when we do that let me write it down so when we integrate our equation one then we write down zero to two pi f of x dx is equal to and also let me just go ahead and copy this entire thing so that it's easier to refer down here yep so here it is then we have um, integral of a naught by 2 0 to 2 pi a naught by 2 is just a constant so I took it out of the integral then we have a1 so we are just um, writing the summation explicitly right now rather than the uh, simpler form so we have cosine of x dx plus a2 0 to 2 pi cosine of 2x dx and so on until a n integral from 0 to 2 pi cosine and x dx and then we have b1 integral from 0 to 2 pi sine x dx plus b2 integral from 0 to 2 pi sine 2x dx and so on until b n 0 to 2 pi sine nx dx and now what you can see here is that the integral corresponding to the cosine terms the integrals over here over here and over here are all zero why is that the case because as i said earlier that we will be using these for useful integral formulae and here we can see that the integral of the cosine nx from zero to two pi is equal to zero so here we have cos cos x cos 2x and cos nx going from 0 to 2 pi and all these terms are 0 so therefore all these terms we can write as 0 and then similarly these terms that is the integral of sine x from 0 to 2 pi 0 to uh, integral of sine 2x sine nx etc is also 0 because in our useful integral number 1 we have that the integral or sine nx dx from 0 to 2 pi is also equal to 0 so all these terms also come out to be 0 actually so the only thing we have left is the first term in our equation so we have here 
integral from 0 to 2 pi of f of x dx is equal to a naught by 2 and then if we integrate dx from 0 to 2 pi then we get x 0 to 2 pi and that gives us 0 to 2 pi f of x dx equals a naught pi yeah and that means that our a naught is equal to 1 over pi integral from 0 to 2 pi f of x dx so this is our first Fourier coefficient and as you can see over here this is exactly what I wrote earlier on so it is 1 over pi 0 to 2 pi integral f of x dx and that is what we have here a naught equals 1 over pi integral of f of x dx from 0 to 2 pi now the next task is to evaluate so this was our first task to evaluate the formula for a naught the next task is to evaluate the formula for a n so how what to do this time so what we do this time is we multiply each side or both sides of equation 1 by cos nx by cos nx and again we integrate both sides from 0 to twice of pi so here this time we have let me just go ahead and copy this equation one once again copy paste over here so this time we have f i'm sorry let me choose the pen f of x cos nx dx integral over 0 to 2 pi equals a naught by 2 0 to 2 pi cos nx dx plus a1 integral from 0 to 2 pi of cos x times cos nx dx plus so on until um, until a n integral over 0 to 2 pi cos nx multiplied by cos nx so um, something like cos square nx dx plus the sinusoidal terms this time so we have b1 multiplied by integral from 0 to 2 pi sin x multiplied by cos nx dx and so on until um, b n 0 to 2 pi sin nx cos nx dx yeah so here you will notice again we will refer to our useful integral formula that i wrote down earlier so this time you will notice that the first term that is the integral from 0 to 2 pi of cos nx as I said earlier based on our formula number 2 in the useful integrals that is this one this term comes out to be 0 so the first term is 0 and then the for the next terms you will notice that cos x multiplied by cos nx dx integral from 0 to 2 pi is actually given over here the equation number six in our useful integral formula and this is also equal to zero so this term also comes out to be zero and so on all the rest of the terms will also come out to be zero when we have cos 2x multiplied by cos nx cos 3x multiplied by cos nx and so on until we reach this term over here that is the integral of cos squared nx over integrated over zero two pi so this term is given here this integral so this integral is actually pi so we have pi over here this term comes out to be pi and then similarly if you look at these integrals over here that is sine x multiplied by cos nx integrated over 0 to 2 pi and so on then you will notice that if we refer to a useful integral formula number 7 then this integral is actually 0 so whenever you are 
multiplying sine nx with cos mx then you are getting zero and similarly whenever you have sine nx multiplied by cos nx then also you have zero so therefore these last uh, terms um, corresponding to the sinusoidal terms are all zero so the only thing that we have left in our equation is we have on the lhs the left hand side we have zero to two by f of x multiplied by cos nx dx equal to a n integrated over zero to two by cos squared nx dx and actually I'm, I'm sorry this was actually pi yeah so we just write pi over here i'm sorry so we have pi over here and that means that our a n is equal to one over pi integral of f of x multiplied by cos nx dx over zero to two pi and that is it that is our a n the second Fourier coefficient so if you have a look at what we started out earlier, so this is what I said the um, a n coefficient would look like. It would be one over two pi integral of f of x cos n x from zero to two pi, and that is what we got as well over here. So that is uh, how you evaluate the first two Fourier coefficients a naught and a n. And now we will move on to evaluating the last Fourier coefficient corresponding to the sinusoidal terms, that is b n. So now we will evaluate B n. And again, let me just go ahead and copy this equation and paste it over here. So this is the equation we'll be using. And this time what we'll be doing is we will be multiplying both sides of our equation by sine x rather than cosine of nx. So here we paste the statement that we had before and we just replace this term cos nx by sine nx so we will be multiplying our equation from both sides by sine nx and then just integrating from 0 to 2 pi so the equation looks something like this we have 0 to 2 pi integral of f of x multiplied by sine nx dx equal to a naught by 2 integral 0 to 2 pi sine nx dx plus a1 integral over 0 to 2 pi cos of x multiplied by sine of nx dx and so on until a n integral 0 to 2 pi cos nx multiplied by sine nx dx plus the sinusoidal terms that is b1 integral over 0 to 2 pi sine x sine nx dx plus so on until bn integral over 0 to 2 pi sine nx multiplied by sine nx so something like sine squared nx here yeah? so we can just write sine squared sorry sine squared nx dx over here now again if you refer to our original useful integral formula then you will notice that the first term is actually this integral over here is actually zero as you can see from the useful integral formula over here that is the integral of sine nx from zero to two pi is actually zero so we write down zero over here and then we have the integral of cos x multiplied by sine nx from zero to two pi in the next term and similarly in the next few terms we have cos 2x multiplied by sine nx and so on so here we want to look at the formula given by the uh, useful integral 7 so if you look at this one over here the seventh formula then you will notice that um, this integral should also be 0 because we have sine nx being multiplied by different cos uh, so cos x cos 2x cos 3x and all of these should also be zero so we write down zero over here and then finally we have over here cos of nx multiplied by sine of nx integrated over zero to two pi so again we if we look at our useful integral formula then we will see that this term is actually also equal to zero so we will have zero 
for all the terms corresponding to the cosine terms. And then finally, we have a look at the sinusoidal terms. So here we have the first term as integral of sine of x multiplied by sine of nx over 0 to 2 pi. And if we look at the useful integral formula number 5 over here, then we can use this and say that, okay, this integral is also equal to 0. So we will come over here and write down 0 here, and we will get similarly 0 for sine 2x multiplied by sine nx, sine 3x multiplied by sine nx, and so on. And then finally, if we look at the last integral, that is the integral of sine squared nx from 0 to 2 pi, then we will see that this is actually not 0. And if we look at the formula number 3, then we see that it's actually equal to pi. So we just simply write down pi over here. And then if we write down our equation, it will simplify dramatically, just like before, to integral of f of x multiplied by sine nx from 0 to 2 pi is equal to pn multiplied by pi. So that means pn is equal to 1 over pi multiplied by integral of f of x sine nx dx from 0 to 2 pi and that is exactly what we wanted to prove. So if we look at the formula that we had earlier on, we had bn equal to 1 over pi integrated from 0 to 2 pi f of x sine x dx and that is what we have derived over here as well. So that is how you derive the Fourier coefficients a0, a, and, and bn. I hope um, I was able to make the process clear and explain it well and you find it useful. Now the last thing is that as I said I had made a slight change over here and said that this is only for functions with a period of 2 pi. However, if you want your equations to be arbitrary, I said that the formula would look something like this. For an arbitrary period, the, the cosine terms are instead cosine n pi x by L and similarly sine terms are instead sine n pi x by L and similar changes would be seen over here as well. So this is rather trivial. What you are doing is you are just scaling your variables. So basically what you are doing is you are replacing, um, you are replacing x by pi x or l, where l is half of the period, yeah? So um, this is um, something very simple. So you just, in whatever I have derived over here and uh, whatever I have written over here, you just replace x by pi x over l and you will get the same formula. It is a very trivial scaling of um, the variable based on the period and, and that is it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and in case you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. I will leave a link to this entire uh, write-up that I hope have over here as a PDF in the description down below. Don't forget to check that out and in the next few videos what we'll be doing is we'll be solving some questions where we derive the Fourier series for square wave, triangular wave, sawtooth wave and so on. That is it. Thanks for watching and have a great day.